Good evening, everyone. My name is Sunil Govindan. Uh, so I'm a Unicorn PMC member. Um, I also lead the data engineering and scheduling team at CloudRaw. Uh, my co-speaker, Craig, uh, who could not join with us today here, um, he's also a PMC member at Unicorn Project, and he's a lead developer for Unicorn at CloudRaw. Uh, in today's session, uh, we'll be talking about uh, SLA-aware batch scheduling uh, in Unicorn uh, with multi-tenant preemption. So here's the brief agenda. Okay. So let us look at uh, some of the core abilities of Unicorn Scheduler. Uh, Unicorn can schedule both uh, batch workloads and long-running services um, in both plugin mode and as a standalone uh, scheduler. Unicorn is also capable of make, taking faster scheduling decisions uh, in case of batch workloads where the resource demand, demand is very huge. Unicorn is multi-tenant aware, um, and it supports hierarchical quotas based on the business uh, requirements. Unicorn can also be deployed both on-prem and on cloud as well. Right. And one of the core differentiator, uh, differentiator feature of Unicorn is workload queuing. Uh, as you can see, there can be many queues, and uh, resource requests can be placed into any one of these queues based on the use case. Uh, Unicorn effectively schedules these uh, resource requests um, based on the resource availability and also based on the scheduling policies such as fairness, FIFO, or the gang scheduling itself. And uh, Unicorn also adhere to the quota limits set, set forth on each of the queues. Um, and then these ports will get scheduled across various nodes in the cluster. And this is an open source project from 2020 onwards, and it's a top level project, Apache. And um, so we are at 1.2.0 version of Unicorn at this point of time. Now let us look at um, about the batch uh, workload itself. Uh, so preemption is a mission critical feature for most of the batch workloads, and uh, we'll try to deep dive uh, into why. Right? So if we consider static queues, uh, where both guaranteed and the resource, uh, uh, the max limits are same, um, and this will definitely help to guarantee that in a multi-tenant cluster deployment, the resources are scheduled within the quota boundaries. Uh, however, um, there is a caveat. This will cause underutilization in most of the queues because most of the time uh, the entire queue capacity won't be uh, used uh, when you're running the jobs for a longer time. Uh, such issues can be resolved um, by making the queue elastic. So that means uh, you'll be able to configure an, a guaranteed resource, and also you can configure um, an, a max limit to it. Um, in, with this model, also there is a caveat because um, when you when a legitimate application uh, wants its resource back, uh, at that point of time it has to wait till other um, application um, to finish uh, its, execu its execution. Uh, this usually causes uh, delays because we don't know how long the other application may take, and in such an, uh, scenarios, it, this found to be uh, much more a trouble. So uh, preemption will be very handy in such scenarios, and by enabling preemption, we can quickly uh, bring the balance across multiple queues, and this needs to be application aware as well, and we will discuss about that in the future upcoming slides. So I want to give a detailed example about the, uh, the previous uh, scenario. So this is one of the um, application uh, called App1, uh, which is submitted to Q1. And uh, it has taken the entire cluster capacity, that is 100%, because there were no other applications running in Q2 at that given point of time. Now, when we submitted some application of two, that is App2 in Q2 at around time T1, you can see that like, there were no enough capacity available. So some around 20 plus uh, Spark app executors were running as part of the app one. So some of the executor got completed at T1 and Q app two were able to grab those resources. And around T2 time frame, it got some more resources because uh, the app one was almost about to finish its uh, execution. And around T3, it got the full resource because app one got completed. Now, as you can see, it took a good amount of time to get its desired capacity for app two, which was running in Q2. So if you enable preemption, uh, we will be able to bring that, um, cut that delay uh, by a lot, and at time T1 itself, we will be able to give the full guaranteed capacity for uh, app applications running in Q2. So with that, 
um, note, I would like to move on to the next segment where we want to discuss about uh, where things are standing with respect to Kubernetes, uh, with respect to these multi-tenant uh, scenarios, right? So in, in Kubernetes, uh, all ports in the entire cluster are, uh, are sorted based on uh, priority. So that means it's a big queue and uh, the ports are then considered for eviction based on, based on that order. Um, and an opt-out is not quite possible um, by looking at the context of the application. For example, I'll take the example of Spark, right? So you have Spark driver port, which is very critical. And if you kill the driver port itself, the entire job will fail. So uh, in today's scenario, it's not possible to do that. And hence, uh, it, this will cause a lot of cost. Uh, I, 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 and this will bring in um, maybe a job which is running for eight hours or nine hours, and what if the driver itself is lost, right? So you'll be losing the whole job and, and results with huge penalty. And uh, coming to the priority class that is used for defining priorities across jobs uh, or ports in the Kubernetes, um, these are cluster-wide objects, right? And, uh, uh, when you, and also, there are no limitations that we can set um, on, on this uh, priority uh, on, on that particular port. So we can, uh, because of this, uh, any rogue user could come and set a larger priority on a port, and that could disrupt the entire system. So this is one of the possibility. Yeah. There are few later, few um, configuration from 1 to 24 onwards. However, uh, in a public cloud uh, setup, it is difficult to be configured because it is mostly an admin and API server related configuration. So now let's look at uh, the preemption uh, in Unicorn itself, a very high level overview. So in order to understand about preemption with Unicorn, um, we need to get familiarized a bit about uh, Unicorn itself, um, how it is handling, right? So Unicorn works with hierarchical queues as I mentioned earlier. So that means resource limits, configurations, and uh, the ACLs uh, controls can be set it to any, uh, any level, uh, it will queues at any level, and it will be inherited to its child queues. And preemption makes use, makes use of the fact that um, it allows um, applying the guaranteed and the max limits to any of the queue at any level. So that means, uh, as, you can, as you saw in the earlier example, uh, Q1 and Q2, um, we will be able to uh, find an overutilized queue at any given point of time and then um, do the preemption necessary to ensure that the undercommitted queue, in that example it was Q2, gets its desired uh, guaranteed quota. And for Unicorn, I think the large batch workloads are the major focus because um, to run jobs like Spark or Flink, we need to ensure that uh, Unicorn handles this volume of jobs. Uh, so. It means that we cannot lose the jobs as well. Um, so we were trying to ensure that we look at each of the uh, application uh, in detail and make sure that the originator port, in case maybe I'll say the Spark po driver port, is always kept safe uh, so that it will not cause any kind of disruptions. Right. And we also uh, give an option to opt out from the uh, preemption itself. So this opt out option will be uh, can be uh, easily configured in the spec itself, and the port will not be uh, preempted, but it is just a, uh, a, a notion or a, a, um, to the scheduler that, okay, don't preempt me. However, in scenarios where mission critical uh, ports needs to be uh, um, scheduled on that node, there could be chance that these port all also could be uh, preempted as the last resort. So in order to understand the um, Unicorn's preemption uh, algorithm. We thought it would be helpful to state it as a series of rules or laws. Then it would be much more simpler to explain what was the uh, algorithm that we were using to select the uh, candidates or, or the victims, right? So well, rule one, um, policies are not guarantees. Uh, this will help to ensure that uh, in a multi-tenant environment, um, not all, all the ports who are saying that I, am, I want to opt out monopolize the entire cluster. So we could get into that kind of a trouble. So we will still uh, preempt those kind of ports. However, we'll keep it as the last resort. Now the second law uh, says that preemption cannot leave the queue lower than its guaranteed capacity. So this exists so that like, queues uh, guaranteed, uh, the queue guarantees that actual uh, guaranteed quota is always met there. 
so that we don't want to bring down the uh, 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 capacity below its uh, guaranteed quota. Third one is, again, simpler. A task cannot preempt um, other tasks in the same application. So when I say application, like take an example Spark, right? So you may have 30 or 50 or plus ports running together as an executor. 50% of them is allocated, then you met the uh, queue quota. And uh, for the remaining, say, 50% of the executors, we should not be preempting the other 50%. So then that means we'll be getting into a loop. Next one is like a uh, task cannot trigger preemption unless its queue is under the guaranteed capacity. So this is again a uh, simpler explanation, right? So uh, if there are enough resources in the cluster or it's, it's in the parent queue, uh, if the elastic quota is also available, then we should go and grab them before even triggering the preemption. So we, uh, we should ensure that the queue is properly starved so that we can do that. The next law is that uh, a task cannot be preempted unless its queue is over its guaranteed capacity. So we want to, uh, so all the queues who are behaving nicely in the cluster will be uh, left as it is. Only those queues who are above its uh, guaranteed capacity and we have a uh, critical demand, then only we'll be uh, preempting them. So rule six is that a task can only preempt a task with lower or equal priority. This is very similar to the uh, today's uh, Kubernetes uh, preemption model that we'll be uh, taking, uh, we'll be considering the task for preemption only if it is lower priority. And the final one is a task cannot preempt task outside its preem preem uh, preemption fence. So in, uh, in Unicorn uh, preemption uh, implementation, we also come up with a concept called fencing so that uh, when, you, when you look at queues, uh, so, um, uh, we can protect by itself by creating a fence boundary, so which we'll be explaining later. Okay, so this is the core uh, design, so which, we, uh, which I also already covered, that a Unicorn um, uh, adheres to the queue hierarchy, and uh, preemption makes decisions uh, to bring the queues to its uh, guaranteed resources. And preemption is also application aware, so that the originator ports are kept. Uh, uh, we'll, be try we'll try to save the originator port as much as possible. And uh, we provide the option to opt out uh, from the preemption. Now, let's look at a workflow. So this is a simple queue structure where you have uh, root queue, marketing, sales, and system queue. And under marketing, you have sales and sales ops, and finance has payroll and reporting. So as you can see, uh, we fenced these two trees, that is sales and marketing, so that it can, uh, if there is a requirement, uh, if there is a uh, requirement on the sales queue or sales ops queue, uh, we will not be preempting anything from the payroll or payroll reporting queue, yeah, or and vice versa. And within each other, uh, we also uh, put a boundary for sales and reporting. So we are, and we did a couple of levels of uh, fencing here. Now let's look at an example where a 20 GB demand is on the sales ops queue. And you can see that uh, there are no available resources in the marketing queue. It's already, it's at its capacity, but sales is already above its uh, guarantee. So a preemption will occur here uh, by taking 20 GB from the sales queue and sales ops will be able to immediately schedule those 20 GB. Right. So I'm showing as memory as a resource, but it could be for anything, CPU or GPU, it doesn't matter. For the simplicity speak, I'll be, we'll be showing this one. And the next one is uh, to the payroll queue. Uh, a new 50 GB can be directly scheduled. You don't need to do any preemption here because available capacity is there. So it directly gets scheduled uh, in the finance layer. And because the route is now, after uh, scheduling the 50 GB, we are at 100%. Uh, now we are trying to uh, submit some more jobs to the pay reporting queue, but this is fenced. So since it is fenced, um, it cannot actually grab resources from the payroll. Uh, so that is actually the core concept here. So you're trying to protect uh, the queues that are of lower priority. So in this case, there won't be any kind of preemption. Finally, uh, we are submitting 10 more GB to the system queue. But system queue does not have any kind of fencing around it. So it can go and actually preempt any resources from these queues. And here uh, you can see that the finance queue is already above its guaranteed capacity. So, and it will be hitting the payroll. So a, a, a 10 GB will be uh, preempted from the payroll queue and that 10 GB goes to the system queue. Okay, uh, now 
to go into the configuration support, right? It's very simple to uh, enable preemption with uh, Unicorn. So uh, you can allow the ports can opt out from the preemption when using Unicorn, uh, and the default Kubernetes priority class itself can be used. So we don't need to add any new additional configuration uh, here. And uh, you, you just need to add an annotation called uh, uh, allow preemption uh, equal to true. Uh, setting this annotation to true will mark any ports to opt out from the um, preemption. However, uh, it's just a uh, indication. It, it can be still be preempted uh, if there is a critical uh, workload coming, but we'll try to put it as last. Now, we're looking into some other configuration features as well. The first one is uh, the queue properties. As you can see on here, we have multiple configurations that are that can be configured along with the existing queue configuration. These are nothing but annotation with which you'll be able to enable preemption uh, in, uh, in in Unicorn. So, first one is guaranteed and maximum resources for workloads to be preempted uh, in a queue. The guaranteed limit must be lower than the um, uh, max limits. Now, like coming to the fencing. A cube uh, specific preemption policy can be uh, uh, configured, and you can give two options. Either you can uh, fence that, or uh, or you can actually say disable the preemption for this queue altogether. So when you when you fence uh, create a fence around the queue and its sub queues, it will prevent the preemption um, request uh, within the fencing uh, boundary. So that any new request coming from the fencing boundary boundary will be uh, will be locked within that segment, and it will not go outside and preempt something else. Now, we also added a preemption delay. And this can be set how soon the preemption uh, will be attempted. So in an SLA-driven uh, environment, this preemption delay will define how fast you need to uh, preempt and how, uh, how slow. So we also have a few other configuration like priority-based fencing. Uh, this will also help to see um, creating a um, priority uh, for the priority classes. The, uh, the priority value can be seen by outside uh, that queue uh, could be uh, the fenced value. But within the fence, you can use any other priority, but outside uh, queues could see it in a different value. So it's a very detailed uh, explanation we'll be covering later. So with that, I would like to go to a quick pre um, demo. Craig will be taking over this part. I will explain the basics of Unicorn preemption, show a sample configuration, and demonstrate how Unicorn applies this functionality in practice. For this demo, we will use the queue setup depicted in this diagram. Unicorn schedules workloads using a set of queues arranged in a hierarchy with the root queue on down. Queues shown in purple on the diagram are parent queues and are used for organizational structure. Queues shown in green are leaf queues and are where workloads are submitted and run. Unicorn supports setting a preemption fence boundary at any queue level, which limits the scope of preemption to that queue and its child queues. These fences are one way. Requests outside a fence boundary may preempt tasks within another fence boundary, but not the reverse. In the setup shown here, there is a system queue which exists outside of any fence. This queue is permitted to preempt workloads in any other queue. Under the org parent, we have two queues, sales and marketing. Each is fenced, which means workloads running in sales can never preempt those in marketing, and vice versa. Finally, both sales and marketing have leaf queues for dev and prod workflows. The dev queues are fenced, but the prod queues are not. This allows prod workflows to preempt dev workflows within each organization, but not the reverse. Shown here is the unicorn queue configuration for our demo. At the top level, we have a root queue containing child queues, system, and org. System is unlimited, but org has a maximum capacity of 400 megabytes of RAM and 400 milli CPUs. The org queue has two child queues, sales and marketing, each with a 200 megabyte maximum and 200 megabyte guaranteed capacity. Finally, each of sales and marketing has two child queues, dev and prod. Both have a maximum capacity of 200 megabytes each, but only 100 megabytes guaranteed. We also define a preemption policy of fence at the sales, marketing, and dev queues. The prod queues are unfenced, which means they are allowed to preempt from their siblings. Shown here is an example pod for this test. In order for Unicorn to schedule things successfully, three attributes need to be present. 
One, the scheduler name needs to be set to Unicorn. This can either be done explicitly, as is done here, or can be done automatically by the Unicorn Admission Controller. Secondly, Unicorn requires an application ID to organize groups of pods together. Finally, a queue must be specified, either directly in this case or via placement rules within the queue configuration. For the purposes of this test, all of the example pods will be of this form. The only difference will be the application ID, queue, and name. The resource requests will be constant at 100 millicpus and 100 megabytes of memory. To begin, let's launch four system pods, which will remain running for the duration of this demo. This demonstrates that pods in the system queue will never be chosen as candidates for preemption. We can see from the Unicorn UI that four applications and four containers have been launched. Additionally, if we navigate to the root.system queue, we can see that the allocated memory in this queue is 400 megabytes. Next, let's launch a set of pods in the sales dev queue. Although we have launched three pods, there is only room in the queue for two of them to run, so one will remain pending. We can see from the UI that seven applications, but only six containers have been launched. Navigating to the sales dev queue shows that the allocated memory in this queue is 200 megabytes, which exceeds the guaranteed capacity of 100 megabytes. This means that tasks running in this queue may be considered for preemption by other processes. Now let's launch a similar set of pods in the marketing dev queue. Again, although we have launched three pods, only two can fit in the queue, so the third will remain pending. However, no preemptions occur, as the queue is over its guaranteed limit, and both the sales and marketing queues are fenced from each other. Navigating to the marketing dev queue again shows the allocated memory in the queue is 200 megabytes, exceeding the guaranteed amount of 100 megabytes. Now that we've added some running pods to the cluster, let's try to schedule a pod in the sales production queue. Because the sales queue is already at its maximum utilization of 200 megabytes, the pod cannot be scheduled directly. However, because the production queue is below its guaranteed resource amount of 100 megabytes, preemption can occur. By default, Unicorn waits for newly created tasks to be waiting for at least 30 seconds before attempting preemption. Once this time elapses, Unicorn will attempt to find a suitable preemption candidate. Since we have a fence around sales, only the sales dev queue is eligible for preemption. Preempting a single task from the dev queue will satisfy the requirements. Either the first or second pod scheduled in the dev queue would work. However, Unicorn prefers to preempt tasks which have been running for a shorter period of time. As we can see, the second sales dev pod is terminating and the production pod is started in its place. When we attempt to launch a second pod in the sales production queue, we see that it remains in pending state because the parent sales queue is already at its maximum capacity. Additionally, since the first pod in the production queue was already scheduled, the prod queue is now at its guaranteed resource capacity, and so no further preemptions will be attempted. Finally, we can see that our original four system pods have remained running throughout the demo, illustrating that they were protected from preemption. Our sales and marketing organizations had no impact on one another, and our dev queues were not able to monopolize resources guaranteed for our production queues. I hope you can see from this demo that Unicorn provides a simple yet powerful framework for managing diverse workloads across a multi-tenant environment. We look forward to announcing this feature as part of the upcoming Unicorn 1.3 release, which So quickly, uh, an acknowledgement. Uh, so Craig and Wilfred uh, from the Unicorn community completed this whole uh, design and the development of the feature. And uh, this will be available as part of the Unicorn 1.3 release, uh, which is uh, due very shortly. And uh, join us and share your feedback uh, through the mailing list and also the Slack channel. Uh, we expect more uh, suggestions and thoughts are always welcome. So thanks again. Uh, we'll wait for some questions and answers if there are any.